Hi, my name is Kristen Brown. I'd like to introduce you to my new book, Ribbonwork Flowers. This is actually my second book on ribbonwork. This has 132 flowers, leaves, and garden extras. Let me show a few of them to you. Here we have a five petal flower. We've got a ladybug. We've got lily of the valley, sweet little sweet peas. We've got a pansy and we've got cherries. An important feature to the book is the visual guide. It actually lists the flowers out in the chapters that they will appear. The most important chapter being beginning flowers. There are 14 different techniques that will take you throughout the rest of the book. We have vintage flowers, minstrel flowers, summer flowers, bohemian flowers, elegant flowers, and then we get into petals, leaves and greenery, and then centers and extra flourishes, and my favorite, garden extras. I'm often asked the difference between silk ribbon embroidery and ribbon work. Silk ribbon embroidery is actually taking a length of ribbon that's specifically made to embroider with and inserting it into the needle and stitching an embroidery stitch with it. Ribbon embroidery is taking a length of ribbon and stitching it with a needle and thread to create a flower such as these. This is an example of a ribbon work flower with a silk ribbon embroidered center. When you read the directions for a flower, you'll notice that there are suggested ribbons that you can use. Not every flower uses the same type of ribbon. For instance, for this particular flower, you would want to have the silk habitat, which is this, this ribbon here. For this particular flower, I've used the silk velvet ribbon. But not every ribbon has to be expensive. It can be an inexpensive ribbon to use, such as this satin ribbon. It's the technique that you choose that's going to make the ribbon and the flower work out excellently. Another thing that you can do is actually make your own ribbon. You can make stitch two ribbons together to make a wider ribbon or you can stitch two together to give you a double-sided effect. You can add lace to your ribbon, you can add another ribbon to a ribbon down the center. These are some examples here of what I've done with that technique. Another thing that you can do is take my line of stencils and then you can actually embroider on your ribbon before you stitch your flower. Each of the chapters that have flowers in them lists the chapters and the page numbers. You'll also see that they're listed with a leaf. The beginning chapter of flowers has the leaves that I thought looked best. Each of the following chapters will have a leaf that actually goes with the realistic flower. When you look at the page of directions, you'll notice it's set up as a recipe. It shows you the image of the flower. It tells you the size of the leaf that you would need in correspondence with the size of the ribbon that you use for the flower. It talks about the suggested ribbon, the amount needed, and then we get into the directions. Another important feature is that it actually tells you on the page how much you would need to have how much you would cut it by. And I think that's an important feature so you don't have to flip through the rest of the book. The rosette is the, is the flower that we're going to work on. And I think this is a good example of size. You want to decide what size of ribbon you're going to use for your project. Here we've got quarter inch, three eighths, five eighths, and seven eighths ribbon. So you see the huge difference you have when you want to choose a ribbon width just think of the size and double that. So if you want a little tiny one, a quarter inch is going to end up being a half inch flower. Now that you've decided upon your ribbon, we can follow the rest of the recipe. It shows you here the leaf that I've chosen to go with the rosette. It tells you what size ribbon you would need for that leaf. It talks about the suggested ribbon, which we've already determined. And another important feature is that it tells you the skill level. This particular flower is easy we go on to intermediate and advanced. I think this is an important feature because everyone wants to make the hardest flower first. And if you can't achieve it, then you feel disappointed. If you know your skill level, you'll feel confident enough to go on through the rest of the flowers in the book. Another important feature to your recipe, it tells you exactly how much to cut for what width ribbon you have. That's important and it's on the page with the recipe. So we looked at our recipe and we know for a 3 8 inch ribbon, we need to cut this 3 inches. I like to start with a clean, fresh edge, so we're going to cut our ribbon. And then we're going to place it on the line of the ruler and then bring the scissors flush with the ruler. And now we have a clean, fresh edge. 
A tool that I like to use is the thread zap pen. What this does is it sears the edges together and any type of synthetic ribbon really ravels quite a bit. This way it's not going to ravel before you stitch the flower together. We're going to sew this with a straight seam and we take a single thread and stitch an assembly stitch which is a small stitch up to the top edge and then we're going to work our way back down to the salvage edge. And these should be very small stitches. When you reach the bottom, you're going to stitch into the salvage edge and take an anchor knot. At this point, you can trim your tail off. That anchor knot is important because now we're changing the type of stitch. We're going to gather along this bottom salvage edge. And if you do not make the anchor knot, when you go to gather, you'll have gathered your straight edge and you'll be making a different flower. These are longer stitches and each of this, these stitches creates the ruffles that create the center. You stop just before the seam. Then we're going to pull the, that ribbon in to gather the center. So you stitch the needle through the seam. Take a little stitch to anchor the knot. You pull that through. And congratulations, you've just made your first flower. Here are some other examples of the rosette in different colors and different widths.